Today we're going to talk about mole mass conversions and how we go back and forth between the number of moles of a substance and the mass of that substance. In order to do that, we need a conversion factor, and that conversion factor is going to be the molar mass of the substance, what we learned how to do in the last set of notes. Now, if you remember, in order to do this, we need to add up the molar masses of each atom of each element in the compound. So in this first one, and we did this one yesterday, we need one sodium added to one chlorine. And we found how to get their molar masses rounded correctly yesterday. So I'm just going to put those up, 22.99 for sodium and 35.45 for chlorine, which gives us a molar mass of 58.44 grams per mole. Now, if you remember conversion factors, when we have a complex conversion, excuse me, a complex unit like grams per mole, we can write that as 58.44 grams over an understood one mole. So this is what that would look like. We have 58.44 grams of sodium chloride or one mole of sodium chloride. Notice something very important that I'm putting the substance I'm dealing with every time. I'm very particular about that. And one mole of sodium chloride for every 58.44 grams of sodium chloride. So that's the molar mass and the conversion factors for molar mass for sodium chloride. Now for barium, if you look up the molar mass of barium, it's 137.327. So if we've got 137.327 for the molar mass of barium, draw our line after the second place past the decimal and that seven says round up. So I get 137.33 for my molar mass of barium. And remember, if there's no number after each of the elements, that means that it's an understood one. So pretty much all of these have that one. So this particular compound has one barium. It has two times one or two oxygens and two times one or two hydrogens. We just determined that barium's molar mass was 137.33. Yesterday, on the last set of notes, we determined that oxygen, oxygen's mass was 16.00 and that hydrogen was 1.01. .01. When we add these all up, we come up with a molar mass for barium hydroxide, which is what this compound is called, of 171.35 grams per mole. Once again, this can be written as a conversion factor. I can, as a complex unit, I can say, oops, I didn't quite write that right, did I? So that should be 171.35. So as a conversion factor, I can write this as 171.35 grams of barium hydroxide per one mole of barium hydroxide. And I'm going to write this directly below it. I can say this upside down, flip it, and say that one mole of barium hydroxide means that I've got 171.35 grams. So those are my two conversion factors for the molar mass of barium hydroxide. And we're going to use those conversion factors in the problems below where we're converting from moles to grams and grams to moles. So let's look at how that plays out. We're going to attack these problems just like we have before. And I'm going back now when I'm doing these problems like this to the situation where if it's in blue or red, you must have it. If it's in green, it's optional. So what I definitely want you to do is the same kind of attack system we had before. We're going to circle what we're trying to find and underline the piece of information that it gives us because that underlined piece of information is going to tell us how to start our problem that we have 2.5 moles of NaCl 
over one. Remember, there's nothing with that one on the bottom. Several of y'all are still trying to put a unit down below, but all this is doing is showing us are just emphasizing that the location of the 2.5 moles of NaCl is on top. Now we may not know anything else about the next conversion factor, but we do know this, moles of NaCl goes on bottom. Now here's something you're going to hear me say over and over. When we're dealing with these conversion factors, if you, you're going to see a variety of conversion factors for dealing with moles and mass and, and different kinds of things in chemistry. They are all based on one mole. So if you have a value with mole in a conversion factor other than one, you're doing something wrong. So as soon as I put mole down here, it better have a one with it. Now again, this is a conversion factor. It doesn't count for the given, just the conversion factor. So the one mole of NaCl needs to go on bottom. And if you look for the conversion factor, the conversion factor up there, remember, was that we had 58.44 grams of NaCl. And I'm going to erase this so it doesn't get confused in with this particular problem. 58.44 grams of NaCl for every mole of NaCl. Now, I'm only going to make you write it one way. I'm not going to make you flip it but I am going to make you write those conversion factors once again beside the problem in brackets. Make sure it's in brackets. Remember how picky I am. So since the one mole is on bottom, looks like the 58.44 grams is going to go on top. That's going to cancel moles of NaCl. And I start to circle grams, and yes, that is good because it is grams of NaCl that I'm looking for. Since these two numbers are side by side, it means that we're going to multiply them together. And when we do, we get 146.1. Notice this is in green. You don't have to have the interim value, but you can put it there if you want to work with the value. Remember, we want USS and Answers, units, sig figs, scientific notation. So I've got 146.1. I want it in scientific notation. Remember, there can be only one. There can be only one number to the left of the decimal. So I need to move the decimal to this position. Now, the number was originally greater than 1. So it's going to end up being 1.461. I move the decimal times 10 to the positive. Make sure you're getting that correct sign for the exponent based on it being a large number greater than 1. And how many places did we have to move it to get it moved to that position? 2. So 1.461 times 10 to the second. Now we look at our sig figs. Looks like our first value had 2 sig figs and our second value has 4. Molar mass always counts for sig figs. It's always a measured value. So it looks like our least number is 2. So we're going to need to round this to 2 sig figs. So draw it after 2 sig figs. The 6 says round up. So our answer for this one becomes 1.5 times 10 to the second grams of NaCl. Okay, let's look at the next one. In this situation, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to circle what we're trying to find. We're trying to convert to moles. We're given 125 grams of barium hydroxide. That Underlining that tells us where to start our problem. We need 125 grams of barium hydroxide over 1. No unit with that 1. No unit with the 1. And now we need a conversion factor. Where are we going to get the conversion factor? We're going to find the molar mass of barium hydroxide. Now, very nicely, we've already done that. We did that up at the top. So if you look back, you'll see that the molar mass is 171.35. Now remember, I want that in brackets up here. The 171.35 grams of barium hydroxide per one mole. 
remember, if you have something other than 1 with mole in a conversion factor, you've done something wrong. So there's a conversion factor for barium hydroxide's molar mass. So we may not know anything about the next part of this problem, but we do know that grams of barium hydroxide has to go on bottom. So grams of barium hydroxide. Notice I'm never leaving out that substance. Now we won't really see in this unit why that's so important, but I guarantee you a couple of units from now you'll see why I'm so insistent that that substance be labeled for each one of these. Now if you look at what we've got up here, looks like the gram value is with the 171.35 because remember, one is always with mole in the conversion factor. That's going to cancel our grams, leave us with moles of barium hydroxide, which is what I circled in the problem above. And notice this, these numbers, there's the first number's on top, the second number's on bottom, the 171.35 is on bottom. What does that indicate that we're supposed to do? Divide. So when we divide, we end up with 0.7295. Zero point seven two nine five. Now, as soon as we see this number, we should already realize that it's a number less than one. It's a decimal value. So when we get done, the sign of the exponent should be negative. So make sure you keep that in mind. We need only one. There can be there can be only one number to the left of the decimal. So we need to move it here. So we end up with 7.295 times 10 to the negative, and we moved it one place, so negative 1. Look at our sig figs. Looks like 125. Remember, the given always counts. Don't ever call that an infinite sig fig value because the given always counts. So there are three sig figs in the 125. Looks like there are five in the molar mass. So our answer should have three sig figs. So I draw my sig fig line. The five says round up that 29 to 30. So I end up with 7.30 times 10 to the negative first. I'm going to run out of room, and I am not going to write it incorrectly because I saw people thinking that I wrote it as some kind of fraction. So I'm going to move it over. 7.30 times 10 to the negative first moles of barium hydroxide is our correct answer.